Good morning. Today is Thursday, November 10th, 2022. Avraham does not seem to be too good at negotiating. We have in this week's Torah portion a narrative of Avraham negotiating with God, and it doesn't seem that Avraham is so precise in his bargaining. God says to Avraham, I'm going to destroy the people of Sodom. Now, let's be clear. The people of Sodom deserve it. The people of Sodom are wicked. They are evil. There is good reason for God to destroy the people of Sodom. Nonetheless, Avraham responds. And it's a magnificent response. Let's read it carefully. <coughs> Avram says to God, God forbid that you, God, should do such a thing. To kill the righteous together with the wicked. That what should happen to the righteous should be the same thing that happens to the Russia. God forbid that you should do such a thing. You, God, are the judge of the entire world. You're not going to judge justly. There are righteous people. Righteous people should not treat it, be treated the same as wicked people. How could you do such a thing? Okay. An amazing statement. So, it would seem that Avraham is arguing that if there are any righteous people in Sodom, they should be saved, right? Punish the wicked people, but don't punish the, the righteous people. So Avram should, sounds like he's arguing, don't punish the righteous people. But that's not what Avram says. Because I left out on purpose one Pusuk, one verse in the middle. Let's listen carefully. Because Avram says to God, Ula yesh chamishim tzadikim ir." Maybe there are 50 righteous people in the city. Are you not going to save the entire city if we can find 50 righteous people there? Hold on a minute. Wait. How is that logical? Save the entire city? Avraham said... You, God, are the judge of the world, and you judge justly. So the righteous should be rewarded, and the wicked should be punished. That's just. So it sounds like, from Avraham's introduction, that he should be arguing to save those individuals who are righteous. How does Avraham then make the leap to say, if there are 50, or if there are 40, or, whatever, or 10, that they should save the whole city? That doesn't make sense. I mean, just like it's not just to kill the righteous together with the wicked, it's not just to save the wicked along with the righteous. Both of those outcomes seem unjust, lacking in justice. How could Avram even expect to save the entire city? So there are a number of answers to this question, and each one of them is extremely important. I want to share with you this morning the answer that is given by Rabbi Shamshra Ful Hirsch. Rabbi Hirsch was a very important rabbi and teacher in Germany in the late mid and late 1800s. And he says as follows. Let's look again carefully at the words that Avraham uses. Ulai yesh chamishim tzadikim besol cha'ir. Maybe there are 50 righteous people besol cha'ir which means in the midst of the city. Hirsch says, it's not simply that there's a righteous person or 50 or whatever the number is who's a citizen of the city or 50 righteous people who are living within the limits of the city. That's not what's going to save the whole city. In order to save the whole city, it requires individuals who are besochair, who are in the midst of the city. Simply being righteous and living there, that doesn't save the city. But 
in the midst of the city, involved in the city, reaching out to the others in this city, if they are those kinds of people who are encouraging, who are persuading, who are influencing others to a moral life, to a spiritual life, that's when a group of people can affect change in the entire city. That's when it's possible that the entire city might be saved because of this small number. And in defining such a person, Hirsch writes, such a person takes everybody to heart. Such a person never despairs, is never tired of trying, however distant the hope of success may be for the betterment of others for the growth and refinement and improvement of others. For 50 of these, or even for 10, it's worth saving the entire city because through them, the entire city can be transformed. Even a city like Sodom. You can warm yourself from the cold by lighting a fire. You will be warm and comfortable and everyone around you will also be warm and comfortable. You can also warm yourself from the cold by putting on a heavy fur coat and you will be very comfortable but everyone around you will still be cold. And that's the meaning, the origin of the great Yiddish phrase, a tzaddik in pelts, which means a righteous person wrapped up in a heavy fur coat. In other words, a person who is righteous themselves, but they're only looking after their own religiosity, their own morality, their own spirituality. They're only concerned with their own spiritual warmth. They're not besocha'ir. They're not in the midst of the city. They're not reaching out to try, to influence, to improve, to assist others. Such a person would not qualify for Avraham's 50 or even Avraham's 10. Such a person would not be able to affect saving the entire city because they're only concerned with themselves. We need to be, we need to try to be, the kind of person that Avraham is looking for, not a tzaddik in pelts. We need to be a person who is besocha'ir, because here's the truth. What Avraham says about Sodom, now we are not in any way com comparable to the evil city of Sodom. But today, we desperately need people who are besocha'ir, who are in the midst of the city. And not just rabbis, and not just teachers, not just professionals. Every single one of us that has goodness inside of us is needed our world, our community, our social circle, our family, we are desperate today for influences, for good. We can't afford people with goodness to keep it to themselves, to warm only themselves. We can't afford that today. We need every single one of us who has a talent, who has a goodness, who has a light to share that because we are desperate for good influences in every area of life. There's another great Yiddish phrase, Ermak Chalen Farzich which means everyone makes their own little chalent. You make your cholent, I make my cholent, and it's delicious. But that's not what the world needs. The world needs for you and for me to make a giant cholent, a cholent for everybody, a giant cholent to share, 
to warm, to nourish, to draw closer, to lift up those around us. Don't be a tzaddik in pelts. Don't make a small challenge for yourself. Don't just be concerned with your own small world. Whatever goodness there is within you, the world needs it. We need it. We all need the light of the goodness that each one of us has in the midst of, involved with everyone around us. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.